Let me share my screen. That's always better to look at. And we will get ready to roll here. Okay. All right, I'm going to open up the chat window. If you are live with me here in Zoom, let me know um, where you're located or what plan you're on. Um, I'm in Illinois, so I'm putting good afternoon. It is afternoon for me. And then for our book brush plans, we have a free plan and our paid plans are plus gold and platinum. And if you don't know what plan you're on, that's totally fine. Not a trick question. All right. Um, so we've got Pennsylvania so far, and I know some folks are just getting signed in. And if you'd rather not answer that, you don't have to at all. Totally fine. And we're going to do Cover Creator today, and it is on all the paid plans. So that is really nice. All right. We've got Georgia as well. All right. Well, I will go ahead and get started today. I'm Kathleen Sweeney with Book Brush. I'm the marketing lead and customer service manager here. And I absolutely love showing off the tools that Book Brush built for authors. So the thing is, there are a lot of nice design tools out there, but they are not all created specifically with the author in mind. So when you sign into Book Brush, you'll find we don't maybe have all of those other things that design tools have that aren't for authors, but yet we have beefed up what is really handy for authors to be able to use. So today's session is Cover Creator 101. We will jump in and we will look at ebook. Um, and we'll do print. We now have the paperback and the hardcover, and I'll show you audio options as well. And so you're feel free to ask questions as we go along. If you're in Zoom, just type them into the chat, and I will keep an eye out for those things. And the cover creator is really great for folks in a lot of different places in your writing journey. So we have folks who are designing their first covers in here. Sometimes you might have the ebook cover and you can come in here and do the print wrap around if you need to do that. If you're getting ready for audio, that's pretty awesome too. We also have Kindle Vela, so I'll show you that. And those are a little different. Those are the story episode in a square version and they feel funny with no text, but that's what they're asking for. Um, we have folks who usually use a graphic designer, but they mock up the images with the cover creator. So that's a nice idea as well. And even if you usually use a graphic designer, maybe you have a short story that you want to put in your newsletter. You do not want to pay the graphic designer for that particular one. You can whip up your cover in here um, for that particular example. So let's jump in. I'm going to head into the center where it says choose a tool to begin and we will go into the cover creator. And I'm going to start um, with an ebook option. For all of these choices, ebook, print, and audio, we have community templates, or you can start from scratch. And I want you to um, see the options for either one of those. We'll go into ebook. When you choose ebook here on the left, you'll see the options are Kindle, Kobo, Wattpad, and then this is where the Kindle Vela option lives too. So I'll just click on that as a quick example. It's a square story image that they actually display in a circle. So this gives you the guidelines of how to get the square that you need, but yet you'll be able to view what's going to be shown when they show it on Kindle Vela. So that's here for you too. We are going to do a Kindle size. So we'll click on Kindle here, and then we're going to do one from scratch. So you can do these steps on the left in any order. You've got the, I'm going to skip the my projects and the templates. My projects are the things that you're saving for yourself in your account so that you don't have to start from scratch. You can come back and make some changes. And then the templates are how you get to community templates. In this example, where we're starting from scratch, we have background, text, and images to work with. So in the background step, you can search from either millions of free images or you can even upload your own image if you have one to bring in. We are going to do the search and I'm going for beach. Um, so I said I'm in Illinois. It is super not beachy, cold, windy. Meh. So somebody should go to the beach. So let's find a beach that we can put into the workspace. Um, just a couple notes when you're doing the background searches, you'll see in the top right corner of each one, there's a little thumbnail um, circle ovally thing with three dots. If you click that, it gives you the option to hyperlink to the license and source. So they're going to pull the ones 
that are free for commercial use. But if you would like to see that yourself, you can link to that to check it. And then you can also save favorite backgrounds here. And on the paid plans, plus in gold, you can save up to 50. So we'll do one just so you can see. You'll get this orange box message in the lower right that says, hey, we've saved this background for you. And then over here on the left, we're in the images tab. If you go next door to saved, you'll find it in here for you. So it's kind of a nice way. If you're wanting to keep organized, you can save some of those as favorites. So plus and gold are 50, platinum is unlimited, saved kind of favorite images. So if you see one you like that you want to use often, or you know maybe you'll see one that you know you're gonna use later, you don't wanna go through, what did I search for, for that? You could just mark it as saved. So we're gonna grab a beach image. I'm gonna click and place it into the workspace here. In any time I use the tools, I really like what we call the eye icon. It's like a little eyeball down here in the lower right corner. But this is an especially good place to check this out. So this lets you see what is inside and outside of this workspace. So in this example, it helps me see where I want to scoot this image. I can also resize this one just by dragging the corners and making it a little bit larger. And then if you really like the tree, you can scoot it over if you're not so um, excited about the tree, you can scoot it back and forth. So you can move there. The other thing that I think is really nice for the eye, eye, eyeball icon is I'm going to scoot this down. So you've got a thin strip of white at the top. When you're looking at this, you probably wouldn't notice that you have a thin strip of white at the top. And the problem with having that is it's not gonna download as the proper size. It will actually be a tiny bit smaller. The dimensions and pixels would be a little bit off and it could cause it to get rejected. But if you turn on that eyeball icon, it helps you see, oh, we've got a little strip up there. Don't want it and scoot so you've got all your edges covered. So that's a nice little way to double check that with the eye icon. So next, what we need are some text boxes. So over here on the left, we'll click text and click add a new text box. I'm just gonna name it the beach. I'm telling you, if you were look, looking for like really inspirational uh, titling, I'm probably not your person, but we'll go with the beach. So we're, we'll have beach in here. You can click edit text styling here underneath. So when you're looking at text editing, the top section is the text itself. And the bottom section is the background of the text box. So you'll see things that you expect to see here, bold, italics, these two capital T's right here underneath add a new text box are a handy way to convert it um, to all capitals and back and forth without retyping, which is kind of nice at times for your title if you want it in all capitals. We can increase the font size a whole bunch. And if it word wraps, it's no problem. Just come over here. Click the text box and grab the size out, sides so you're kind of resizing it here. And I'm going to center it. And then we'll talk a little bit about some hidden gems in here. The font area defaults to Fahala 1. And if you scroll through, you'll see a lot of nice default things. But at the top, it says add more fonts. You have in here a thousand fonts to choose from. We added this when we added the cover creator because we want people to be able to create um, some really nice looking covers. So if you look through here, you can filter. And if you've seen me before, I'm crazy for font and I love display and handwritten. So you can go through and filter. You can also change the sort in the top section from popularity to name. The benefit of that is it's alphabetical. So if you are on the lookout for a particular font and you know the name of it, it can help you um, maybe find it a little faster. Even if it's halfway through the alphabet, at least you could speed through here. So if you see some that you like, what you'll do is click next to this. So I'm gonna go in this third column down here, cherry cream soda. Yes, I want that one. So I will click it and you can see a check mark next to it. And just for another example, I'll do this one right above it too. So you can go through here, check mark ones that catch your eye. If you've check marked some before and you wanna take them back out, you can uncheck and remove them from the list. In this window is also where you could upload your own custom font here on the right-hand side. So if you purchased a font that you're wanting to use on all of your book covers, you can upload it right here. 
All right, so we'll close out. I'm gonna click on the font area here on the left and you'll see the just added fonts are now right here for us. So we can easily change it to some of these that, we, um, that caught our eye in here. If it word wraps again, it's okay. Come over here, grab it, make it a little bit bigger. Or that was a pretty jumbo font. We can make it smaller. Now, one of the other neat things that you can do in here is text shadow. It defaults to a nice amount of text shadow and I'm going to adjust it with the slider here and see how it's fine, but it's just not as crisp. And so as you use this slider with text shadow, you can really get some crispness and definition on your text. So feel free to play with text shadow. You could do a cool color too. So if you're doing a fantasy or something where you want some cool purple, you could add those kinds of things too. Another neat idea for the font, and I'm gonna use the eye icon so we can see the full um, text box. In the lower left corner of the text box is a plus button, so you can just duplicate the text box and it will match. So we will click it, it adds a second one. The neat thing about this is that you could stagger them like this, so you're getting a little bit more depth by just having two matching text boxes that are just a little bit offset. So feel free to give that a try. We'll come back to the left, add a new text box, and we will drop in author name. I'm going to place this at the bottom. And then I'm going to show you background removal. I don't know if anybody has checked this out yet. The background removal is a tool in BookBrush. Um, it's used most of the time with the cover creator here, where you can use artificial intelligence to peel the background away from an image with a person, an animal, a product, or a vehicle. So let me show you how it goes. We'll click on background on the left. And I'm going to search back like the back of a person here. And then we'll scroll through and let's try this lady here. Um, she's got like a forest in the background. She's holding a coffee cup. You click those three little dots, same place where you get the license and source info. And you can click remove background. So it's going to, like we said, use artificial intelligence to peel the background away. So she's going to be part of our new beach adventure over here um, without the background that she's in takes just a minute or two, hopefully not a whole minute, for it to happen. And then you'll see it in the image. All right, she's almost appearing. Okay, here she is. So she now came into the image. I'll make her larger. I'm going to double click so we can resize with the slider. You can also layer any elements here. And this works for text boxes and all the things with these two little arrows in the lower right corner. So I can send her behind the text box and she's in this account here um, as an image. So I could use the tools on the edit team on the left to flip her horizontally, add filters if you want to. And so it's pretty magic. There are a lot of other more complicated ways outside of book brush to remove the background, but it's super slick in here to use the background removal tool. Um, there is a question in the chat that says, is there a way to color, for instance, like to change the color of the eyes? So nothing that specific, but you know, I don't like to give no for an answer. So I do feel like you could do some fun things with these filters here um, for a little bit of changing. And you could also have a little bit of transparency on her. So if you, that kind of makes it, that's a little too much. But if you were doing something where that kind of suited, like she... I don't know if she's a ghost or <laughs> I'm not the writer, I'm the reader, but you could have some cool things that would work with that. Um, I would potentially click the background too and maybe add the same filter as you have on the person. Now with color here, you can do a little bit with the background. So we could add a, let's say a red here and then adjust transparency of the background. And then I'm going to click through, oops, some different colors. And you can see how the background changes, like the, even the mood, just with these different kind of colors behind. So there is a little bit that you can do, but nothing as specific as a person's eye or their shirt or anything like that. 
um, is there's a question, can you lock the title and font and things once it place, is placed on the background? We don't have a lock feature, uh, although that would be cool, um, but you can save it as a project as many times as you like. So if you like one, it's kind of almost like that one's locked and saved. You can make another one. So you didn't lose what you had it already set, if that makes sense. So that's kind of an option. All right, so that's how quick we just made our own cover here. What I would suggest for folks is to use what I kind of call zoom in and zoom out in the lower right. And give yourself a look at the thumbnail version. So as readers scroll past, this is what they might see. And you can then as you're viewing it in that small format, see if there are changes that you might want to make and then you could zoom back in. So then we'll save it as a project in the top stripe. Yes, oh, perfect, you were just asking this. So we're gonna save it as a project. And then if you're satisfied with it, you can go ahead and download and you'll click download here at the top and your options are PNG, JPEG or PDF. And there's a handy little option in here where you can save it right into the covers. So once it gets the progress bar all the way across here, and we're almost there, I'll show you, you can save it into covers so you can use it right in the other tools like instant mockups and things like that. I think it's slower when you're streaming. All right, so you would open up here, save in book brush, and you can save it right into covers. That's going to put it in anytime you're in a tool checking the cover that you want to select for the 3D image, you have it in there. Then if you want to find it again, you'll click on the left where it says my projects, and then these are here for you. So you've got that in there um, to pull up and make changes to if you want to as you go along. Now with the background removal, I wanted to mention that's gonna be in the images section under my images. So I've used her before, so she's a little further down the line here, but then it does not cost you a credit to use um, additional time. So you would just use pay the credit for background removal. Then it's in my images for you to use whenever you would like. Background removal also works on your own photos. So if you purchased a couple or one of those big shirtless dudes that people put on their book covers, you could bring that in and then use background removal in here to remove it and put it onto a new format or a new book cover. All right, so that is creating um, an ebook cover from scratch. This was a Kindle size. You could click back on size and click if you need Kobo, and then it's just gonna shift things. Everything's still there. You would just kind of resize within the new space since they're a little bit different sizes, um, the dimensions and pixels are different. So you can do that. Um, now, if you're looking for sample ideas or a starting place, I would suggest the templates. And I love the templates in all the book brush tools. We'll click on the left for templates here and you can filter by type. So you have ebook, print, audio, and then here I'll show you the Kindle Vela. Again, they're the square and then they display as a circle no text or anything. But let's pick an ebook one here. I'm really getting crazy for Christmas here. I'll probably pick a Christmas one. All right. I think it's six Fridays away and one of them's tomorrow, so it's not very far. Um, what I like about these sample um, community templates are it gives you a nice starting point of what can go where in that workspace, but you can still change everything you want. So this wish list, for example, you can click, you can change the font, the actual wording, all those things, author name up here, I could change it. So I'm typing in me, you can work um, with a different font if you wanna change it, you could simply change the size. You could also use line height or letter spacing to make it more compact or stretch it out. And you can move it anywhere in the image. So if anything, it kind of gives you a look at books in your genre, what tends to go where on the cover, and then you can just plug and play and change your things. So let's go back into the projects or into the templates here. And we'll look at genre because you can also filter here. So if you need say mystery, thriller and crime, you could choose all of those here. And then you've got the different choices and things. 
to look at. If you like an ebook version, you can bring it in and make it print. And also, if you like a print version, and, but what you need is ebook, you could bring that in and then isolate it in the ebook format too. All right, so there's ebook for you. I'm going to refresh and let's take a look at the print options. And you guys are um, welcome to keep typing questions into the chat. No questions, a dumb question. All right, we'll click print here. Now, print is going to ask you some more information. Under the print type, you'll select paperback or hardcover. We'll start with paperback. And then on the trim size, you've got all these preset trim sizes in here. So let's just say we're going to go five and a quarter by eight. Then you'll choose your paper type. And this is important so that the thickness is the proper amount so that you have each, each type of paper is not the same thickness and you need to have your spine be the proper size for this certain thickness of paper with um, this many pages. So fiction is usually cream. So we'll choose cream. And let's say our page count is 315. So we'll put that in. And then I'm gonna click submit. So now this is more the whole paperback version. When you're doing this one, you can start from scratch. You can use a template or you can do kind of a combo here. There's an optional choice on the left that says add your covers. You can just bring in, for example, the front cover if you have it and then use the tools to design the rest of it. So that is one way that folks who already have an ebook cover done, bring it in and make things work in there for them. All right. Um, there's a question, is there any way to remove an item from the background? No, the back, I hate to say no. I'm thinking we'll cover it up one way or another. Um, but the background removal does the reverse. It takes the background away. And so you have the person or the animal or product or vehicle left. There's not really a way to take something out of the background. Um, but I have some ideas. Let's go into background. And let's do a forest. And here, we're going to put this in here. I haven't tried this one before, but based on your question, I'm going to give this a try. So we're going to make the background image fit across here. Again, kind of peep the edges and make sure that you've got everything past all the edges or at least touching so you don't inadvertently have that little strip of white showing. I wanna talk about this white rectangle here. This is where the barcode will go. So that's important um, for you so that you don't put anything um, important there that's gonna get covered up. So it's not on the final image, it's just essentially a placeholder for you. And we can click on the editing tools. We could flip horizontally if we want to. And I'm gonna take a try at kind of covering uh, that lantern. So let's say we just don't love it. Under the images section here, there are some cool options like color blur and effects. So I'm going to try a color blur and we'll take this green one here and I'm going to make it larger. And you could even layer two things. So if you didn't want it like totally green, we could take a black one and I'm going to click on the black one and I'm actually going to adjust some transparency here. So what you could do is it could have some text going across. So let's say we'll do a text box. We'll put in that it's title and I'll just pick um, something fun here and we'll do it capital, much bigger. So it may be where that doesn't seem to look odd at all uh, once you've uh, settled everything together and consider um, two text boxes that kind of mix. So we could put in another one, which could be the, and you know how like you have two different fonts in your title, you can accomplish that with two different ones here. So we could make this one big here and settle it over the top. Um, it could overlap, whatever kind of thing you're going for, but make use of, so each text box can only have one type of font, but you can have as many text boxes as you want. So technically, can you re remove an item from the background? No, but I feel like there are a lot of ways that you could make things work um, to do something like this. So we'll keep working in here. You can do another text box and 
this could be just for your blurb on the back. And a lot of times that's more like uh, 10 or 12, so much tinier. And you can make that box as big as you need it here. We'll add another one for author name. And this is a time where I would consider duplicating. So we're gonna add our author name here. You can duplicate it for the spine. So I use the plus button in the lower left corner. And then you can rotate any text box with this um, rotate to the nearest 45 degrees arrow over here underneath add a new text box. So you can just click rotate, rotate. And it lines it up really nicely for the spine. I would just reduce the size on that one. So position it where you'd like. You can also rotate any element with this circular arrow here in the upper left corner. But um, for getting it perfectly vertical, I kind of like the rotate to the nearest 45 degrees. So this is just a quick little look here that we um, put together kind of a full um, print cover. So I consider these little dotted green lines in here, basically your safety zone. So what's outside is what they allow for the bleed. But if there's any, so it has to go to the very edge, but if there's anything you want to be sure is on your cover, keep it inside those green um, lines. Um, there's a question here that I um, missed. It said, are there guidelines to help align elements? Yes, in the lower right corner, there is a box that's called toggle grid lines. And so it's the top one. One click gives you these grid lines. So you can kind of see those lined up on there. And the next one gives you movable centering tools. So when I click, and I'm going to um, remove the background and scoot it down here just so you get an idea. This author name text box, when I have those movable centering tools on, I'm going to center it in here so it's centered in the text box. And you can also then see the blue lines that appear so you can kind of nail it. The other thing that's nice is these are movable. So if I wanted to line it more up here or down here and then scoot these. So if you're lining up all kinds of different things, if you have multiple text boxes on your back, you could scoot this over and line up each one of them so that it touches. So make use of those. Um, and then whichever element you're on, it will materialize. That line will show up in there. And then you can just turn those back off. So it's in the lower right corner. One click for grid lines, one click for movable centering tools, and the third click turns those off. So um, definitely make use of those as you're um, checking things out and seeing how it lines up. Good question. Now I'm going to pivot this one. Um, we're going to go back to the size and peep at it as a hardcover. So hardcover is a little bit different. Let's say we, we um, will need to do hardcover does not have as many trim sizes. So we'll switch it to six by nine. But we could leave for this example, cream, 315 and click submit. I'm gonna go ahead and just scoot the background out of the way so we can talk about this a little bit more. This one's got um, some different things because of course you've got to account for the hinge area and the wrap that goes around. So hardcover is gonna look a little bit different for you. If you're doing both, you would just kind of arrange each one into that proper space. But again, place for the barcode and all those things. Let me get the background image larger here for us. Um, and you can also go back and um, undo if you wanted to click the undo button in the upper left corner and say, okay, I wanna get back over here to the other one. It goes each click that you made, it will undo at the same rate. So if you do something and you think, hmm, not a fan, all is not lost. You can click through the undo steps if you want to. With this example, I want to go to the top and do save as a project for you so that you can see um, that white rectangle is not in there. So the rectangle is just in the workspace. It's the, not going to be there in your final downloaded image. All right, we're rolling along here. This one tends now that we have the hardcover and all the things to go a little over the 30 minutes, but I definitely want to show you how we can do a um, uh, Oops, one of the audiobooks. So I'm going to refresh here and we'll take a look. So if you're doing audio, we'll choose audio here and pick an audio cover. Oftentimes you already have the cover and you're just 
it's the vertical version and you're fitting it into this new square format. So in this case, a lot of times you'll bring in your cover as the background. So we'll go to the background step. You can click upload an image and I'm gonna bring it in from my desktop here. And then we're just gonna click so we can resize it into this space. And the challenge that folks have when they're taking this vertical image and fitting it into a square is you may lose some of your text boxes, but it's actually not a problem because you can see if we use the eye icon, what's down here is the author's name. So we'll just add a new text box and we can put it in. So I'm going to edit the text styling, choose something that looks a little bit more like this. We'll do it all capitals. I'll stretch my text box out here. This is a great time to use the rotate to the nearest 45. And then have you seen the color picker? Because this would be also a really great time for that. Anytime you're choosing a color, you can click in the color area and you'll see this little map next to this circle. Right now it's white because the color is white. There's a little eyedropper. And when you bring this over, it will match perfectly whatever's in the center. So if we wanna match that orange color, we can. We can come over and just put it right in there. And then I don't really need the text shadow, so I can remove that if I want to, or have it adjust a little bit, make this bold. But be sure to try that color picker so that if you're wanting to match something um, perfectly and you don't know the color code, you can just do that. So now we don't have to worry that we lost our author name because we added it. And then in the background area, we can do a color here. I can just go ahead and make it kind of a black color. And now we've got what looks like the audio version. And you can add fun things under the images. Some of these blank stamps are pretty nice in here. To add, like let's take this for example. And we will do the rotating. So I'm gonna bring it around like this. And this could be a place where you could add some extra text. Um, we will come over here to text, add a new text box and narrated by, let's say it's me. So we will put this in. I'm gonna edit the text styling and make it much smaller. And if you wanna force the text, you can, I'm gonna click enter by my name and then I can bring it down here and we'll do the stamp, make it a little bit larger, maybe not quite that big. And if you're not loving each little piece, like you could also blur that a little bit. You click it, do a little bit of a blur so it gives it almost that same kind of look and feel with the uh, outer space theme. So feel free to explore under images, any of these fun little community stamps. I'm a big fan of the corner page flip. This one can also um, flip, we need to flip this other way. And that would be a place you could have a pst or some other information. It's perfect for book covers and book looking things. So feel free to add that if you want to too. But we were easily able, if you remember, this is the full vertical version to convert it into the square without losing out really on any of what made that cover um, stand out. So this one, again, I would save it in the top stripe as a project. And then you'd be able to download as a PNG, JPEG, or the PDF. The PDF is used mostly on the print versions. That's what um, they'll need if you're going to upload it to a lot of the print services and things like that. So we have packed in a lot here in 30 plus minutes. If you have particular questions, let me know. We can always jump into other pieces or other things. Um, I'll get the recording out when I get it back from Zoom this afternoon. So if anybody needs to watch that again, or if you are watching the recording, um, thanks for watching. All right. Well, I think we're good here. I will go ahead and 